Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Shooter. I know a lot of you write scripts, write custom editors. Sometimes it takes you so long putting these together. Why not find something on the Unity Asset Store that can do it for free, that can give you all the extensions of a custom editor without you having to do all the legwork? So I'm going to compare four different editor tools which add a bunch of attributes. So I will look at one called Tetra Attributes, one called Awesome Attributes, one called Naughty Attributes, and the one called Editor Attributes. If you missed out, Unity do have 11 assets for $1 on the Unity Asset Store and I created a video all about that. You could check that out. Do let me know if you have any great suggestions for your own attributes, creating them or assets that you might have found too. So I always love to hear from you and be sure to throw a like and be subscribed to me because it really helps out the channel. Now, first of all, we're looking at Tetra attributes. And when you import this in, you can go to their example scene and you can open up their attribute example. And you can see here, they've got a bunch of custom stuff, which is actually incredibly useful out of the box. And it's got customization for titles. You can draw fields if you want to. You can use titles. You can do read only fields. You could do help text boxes. You can use toggles to edit different fields as well. You can do a minimax slider. You can do one which snaps values to 0.25 increments, file paths, warnings for required fields, sprite previews, which I think is really useful, especially for things like scriptable objects, and custom buttons and even tags to use along the way. They do have included documentation, which has all the change log and has all of the examples of how to implement each section in one. Now it does have an example script included. Now, if you want to use these in your own scripts, you need to use a namespace called tetra creations attributes. And you want to add that into your namespace field. And I'll just show you this side by side. So you've got the title, you've got the custom color for the text, and then you've got the custom color for the line itself. Then you can decide the line height and the width. And you can even set if you want this left or right, as you can see further down here with this title, which is title on the left. If you see that it uses a line title colon true to be on the left hand side, you could do really nice things like the help boxes help just uses square brackets help box. And then you can add the information in there and the help box type is help box dot warning. If you want something more apparent like the warning, you can go down to the one which talks about the required. This does have the required box and anything below that, it will say that it requires the collider component to make this visible. Something really useful, like I said about this sprite preview is all it uses is the square brackets sprite preview. And of course, if you want to create your own buttons, which are really easily, you can just use name of, and then the button callback, and then the name of it, how wide it's going to be, and whether it's going to be the first or the second row. And then you give a public method just for what's going to happen when that button is actually executed. Now we're going to look at something called awesome attributes. And if you import that into unity, this one is built in a very similar way with the demo scene, which you can open, which is just called demo scene. And it has separate scripts for each of the different sections that they have, whether you want a demo to show and hide, whether you want sections to show the different warnings, the read only, the preview for a sprite icon, and even things, other things like gradients, button heights and custom debugs and things in there. And if you go to their attributes folder, you will see that they've got the scripts for each different thing. So if you want to learn about any of these, you can do this. Now, when you check this out, you do want to use the namespace of awesome attributes and say you want to do things like the demo for the warnings or you can use required and specify whether that's the required message type dot info or the required message type dot warning. For things like the read only, you could just use a read only if, and you can even reference the variables or the field in that type. So then you can say that if that is true, you will be able to reveal the field as on here. I like the idea of the preview. The preview is very simple. You can preview a sprite right in the editor, which makes life a lot easier and even things like a gradient. So you can use a gradient color without you writing custom details. So this does have a similar selection compared to Tetra attributes with separate scripts if you want to get to know how to use it. Next one we're going to take a look at is the naughty attributes. When you import this, you do have a readme, packages, scripts, and samples. You can open up the demo scene and check out the demo scene in this version. You can also check out the scripts folder, the test, and you can see all the different test scripts that might be able to help you. And with their draw attributes, you can see that it has an animator parameter component. It has buttons like all the rest. 
It does have a curve range, which is new compared to the other ones. It has a drop down list, which I quite like. It has enum flags to be able to set them. It has an ex expandable lists, which are not arrays. Horizontal lines. So you can choose different ones depending on how you want to space these out in your editor. An info box to be able to add just basic information. Input axis, layers, min max sliders, progress bars, which are quite cool. Reorderable lists. So we can add these and move these around. Resizable text areas, previews and sprite previews, sorting layers, tags, box groups to be able to make this look neater, fold out groups for integers, enable if and disable if hides, labels, and unchanged, and readme, along with required and input. So just by going through this, you can see that Notch Attributes has a, a slightly bigger selection of things that you might find useful. If you go into the label, you need to use the namespace naughty attributes when you want to use it. And you can see that this just uses a label and you get the label type. And then you can actually have some serializable things inside if you want to hide these. I quite like to look at the progress bar to see how this is done. You can see that it has a progress bar. You can set the health, what value it's going to be out of, what the color is, and then the health, whichever the value will be at the time. And you can even, as it shows here, you can even have nested progress bars if you want to hide those away. And these ones are quite cool with the horizontal lines in different colors. You could use the horizontal line and then specify the color type, which is the different ones that you can use along here. And then if we want something like the drop down, we can use drop down and then the name of the value and then a reference to the variable that we're going to have. And we're going to then specify the different values between one, two, and three to get a nice, easy drop down, which is nice and useful to be able to use day to day. And the last one we're going to look at is something called editor attributes. And when you import this one in, it's got all the licenses, readme and documentation. And this comes with a full Microsoft Word document to show you how to use it and importing it and using the namespace, which is editor attributes. You could check out the sample scene and you could check out the different style of attributes, whether it's conditional for enabling, showing, hiding and different message box. And you can even customize the text in these message boxes. You can use the min max sliders, a clamp attributes, a wrap time attribute, different buttons to scale the button field to have inline buttons in different formats selection buttons and value buttons that have multiple in the same list. You've got drop downs tag drop downs, scene drop downs, sorting layers, animators, and different properties. And then you've got everything that other ones had, which you've got titles, again, the help boxes, the property orders, indents, line attributes, like we'd seen, and even the horizontal groups and different groupings to get these looking better. So let's say you go to the button attribute here, you can see it's using the namespace of editor attributes. And you can see that it uses the and it uses the custom name of button. You can specify the name and you could specify the width and the height and the text size in there. I did say that some of the warning, you could set the text and you can use text formatting in these, whether you need bold, italic or particular colors, you can set this with angle brackets and setting the tags, which you can find on the Unity Asset Store page. And I'll put it down in the description so you could check all the rich text type of customizations. And even if you want to look at things like the foldout groups, you can use the foldout group name, give it a title of whatever that will be, and then you could specify which fields should be included. So whether you use the Tetra, the Awesome, the Naughty, or the Editor attributes, any of them could work in your favor. You can even add all of them together if that's something that you want to get some of the features. I would say that the most extensive list of features is either the Naughty attributes, probably the editor attributes just swaying that slightly. But I would say most simple and comprehensive list you'll find is most likely the Tetra attributes because it has probably the most essential ones that you'll need without giving you a load of extra features that you might never need to use. So I think this will boil down to what your preference is, but I'll put all the links down below so you can check these out for yourself because it will save your life somewhere down the line when you're making your own projects. So I do hope you find this useful. Let me know down below if you have any other editor tools which help you add attributes or anything like that. 
Tell me your favourites, because I'd love to know. And do be sure to check out Unity's big bundle that's appeared on the Unity Asset Store, which is 11 assets for $1. And do be sure to check out my Patreon too to get over 225 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. A massive thank you to Peter Steiner, Very Shooter, Jennifer and David for their amazing support. And everybody else, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.